Nice. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, my name's Phil, and my band is called The Microphones. We're on tour, blah, blah, blah. This is our show. Um, thanks for coming. And Mira's playing next. Different band. So just to give you a basic idea on why the microphones is so weird, the band was created by one dude in high school and he used his ba old band equipment as the instruments for all of his albums. He, he came out with three different EPs in the span of a year, made it a best-selling album as his debut album, and then made one of the most legendary albums of all time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about where it all started. The first album. It was hot, so we stayed in the water was basically a really really good taster for what we will be experiencing in the glow part two it was a little bit rougher than the glow part two with the same because the glow part two was pretty rough but when i say rougher i mean more edgy more rugged more strong bass guitars than the glow part two ever had less acoustic driven and more i guess angry if that's the right word it's very aggressive and it's one of my favorite records that he's ever made in my opinion it's second to the glow part two which is saying something because glow part two is really good and i'm about to talk about it right now now the glow part two is a continuation from a song from it was hot so we stay in the water called the glow and the entire album is based off of the idea that the glow is your life force it's what gives you meaning and throughout the tracks, I'm going to explain the differences and the most important parts of the entire album. Now, let's start off where it's all important. The first track, I Want Wind to Blow. This track has a lot of experimental elements, such as the amazing folk guitar, the piercing vocals that will become a staple of this record, and honestly, my favorite part, the lyrics. Now, the microphones is known to have very out there lyrics. I mean, if you look at any of their songs, they can be pretty crazy. But the I Want Wind to Blow in particular is very, very weird. And my favorite part is the lead in, the drum lead in to the glow part. The song The Glow Part 2 is one of the most amazing songs on this entire record. It symbolizes the entire mental state Phil was in when he was writing this. The sudden shift from I Want Wind to Blow to the crazy drums and scary electric guitars 
just go crazy with the piercing vocals. They're one of the greatest parts of this album, and it would not be the same without it, and it sets the tone for the rest of the album for songs like The Moon, Headless Horseman, and the rest of the entire track list. But let's talk about my favorite song on the album real quick. The moon on the glow part two represents everything Phil is fighting for, all the goodness in his life, everything that he wants. And you can tell by the way he sings, by the enchanting guitar instrumental, by the horns in the background, making it almost seem angelic in how far away it is. You almost wanna fall into the music that you're listening to. It's so beautiful. And it's one of the most important tracks on this 20 track album, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's the best. And I really don't know what this album would look like without the moon being there to strengthen the fight going on in Phil's head during this tragic time in his life. Seems like we're heading to a close. We're about to talk about the last track, My Warm Blood. This track is over nine minutes long and it strengthens and basically brings this entire experience together. It adds upon all the different things that were said on every single album before it and every single song before it. And the craziest part is it only has Phil say stuff for the first minute. The next eight minutes are just ambience and it's really peaceful. It's almost saying that Phil's at peace with the way his life is right now and that he's genuinely happy after all the things that he's gone through. These are the type of things that really make you ponder when you go back and re-listen to it. And it's my favorite part of this album. So in conclusion, the Glow Part 2 is an overlooked, unappreciated gem of an album. The Microphones is an overlooked, unappreciated gem of a band. And Phil, Phil Elverum is an overlooked and unappreciated person as a whole. I mean, we can all agree that Phil Elverum is a very interesting guy. And I can only hope one day I get to meet him and ask him, what were you thinking making this album?